Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, what is the national board game of Canada? Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at 1759 Siege of Quebec from Worthington. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. 1759 Siege of Quebec is a solitaire game in which the player can take on either the role of the British, attempting to wrest control of the St. Lawrence from the French, or the French valiantly trying to defend their hold on the area from the British. There is a two-player variant of this game as well, but today I'm just going to look at the solitaire game. The game board is a map of the St. Lawrence River and its environs. You, of course, have various locations for British and French troops and gun emplacements. You also have spaces for the British to place their ships on the board. There's a safe anchorage just outside of the river. You kind of have the upper part of the river and the lower part of the river. The game board also has a morale track numbered 1 for 10 for each of the players. Now, depending on which nation you're playing, you're going to take their order book, and then you're going to take the opponent's solitaire deck. So if you're playing the British, you take the British order book and the French solitaire deck. Now, there's ways to adjust difficulty by having a greater number or lesser number of cards in the deck. You're going to go ahead and set that out there. Now, the game is pretty simple and straightforward. On your turn, you select a specific order. Now, there's a number of orders that you can choose from. For instance, the British can choose to bombard the French position. They can choose to move their ships or move their men. They can choose to attack the villages or attack onto uh, Quebec itself. The French have similar things they can do. They can have Indian raids. They can attack English positions across the board as well. So you can go ahead and you can select which action you want to perform. Now, critically, both the British and the French also have these more aggressive actions. If you choose to do that, you can place one of your markers on one of the aggressive actions as well. But you only have a limited number of aggressive actions you can take. After you've selected which order you're going to perform, you're going to go ahead and draw the card from the top of the Solitaire deck. The order may say you can proceed with the attack, but you have to take a morale hit, or you can proceed with the attack, but then you kind of have to test something else and roll a die specific on that card, or it may say some other event is going on somewhere on the board that may help you or more likely hinder you, um, but there's all sorts of things that can happen with that card. It may cancel your order altogether. So after you've resolved the card's effect, you're going to look at that card's order. Now it's going to be either A, B, C, or D. Now depending on the order you've chosen in your order book, there is a grid which says A, B, C, or D. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll the die, you're going to look at the grid with that number, with what your opponent is doing, and then whatever you roll, whatever number you roll, you cross-reference with that order, and that's going to tell you what happens. Do the British lose casualties, or do the French lose casualties? Do you lose morale? Um, do you, is there some other negative effect or no effect that's going to happen as a result of that die roll? Now, if you had chosen to do an aggressive action, you roll not only the white die, which is the normal die you roll, but you also roll the black die. And as soon as you have resolved the basic roll, then you're going to go ahead and resolve the aggressive roll. Now, this thing can be dangerous because, again, either side suddenly could lose two casualties instead of one or take greater morale hits. So there's, there's a lot of danger with those aggressive actions, but sometimes you may deem them to be necessary. Now, either side can win if their opponent's morale track gets all the way to zero. Also, the British can win if ever they have units on the Plains of Abraham, but the French have no units in Quebec, they automatically win the game. The French can win if ever their opponent, the British deck, completely runs out, they've weathered the storm, and they survive. 
So you're doing this every turn, you are selecting an order, you are drawing the uh, card from the Solitaire deck, you're resolving the event, you are then rolling for their counter order, you are including any aggressive actions if you've chosen to do that, You then you are resolving the effects of those die rolls. You're going back and forth, going through the card deck this way, and finally, if you can lower your enemy's morale to zero or reach your objectives, then you win! 1759, Siege of Quebec. So, um, I recently played and reviewed 414 BC Siege of Syracuse, and this is the same system. Very similar. If you played one game, you can jump right into this one. They are incredibly similar. A few little differences here and there, but generally they are very, very similar games. Got the same DNA. Now, this game is... I really liked the Siege of Syracuse. I thought that was really fun, and I played that both as a two-player game and as a solitaire game. And I liked it as a two-player. It was okay as a two-player, but I didn't love it. I loved it as a solitaire game. So I'm playing Siege of Quebec, and I didn't play the two-player game, but I imagine my feelings would probably be the same. Two players, probably okay, but, but the solitaire is really where it's at. I played this game a few times now as both the British and the French, and I... Boy, it's tough. I'll tell you right now, it's a tough game. I've yet to win this game. Uh, it's, it's brutal, but it is a lot of fun. It's one of those games where you, you know... Everything's kind of preset. It's not about maneuver in, in the traditional war game sense, but you still have tremendous choices with those orders. Do you take the aggressive actions? Uh, every round, you've got choices. Sometimes the cards themselves present choices for you. And really, that's what it's what's about. It's a mark of a good game. It's tough, difficult choices that, that, that have real tangible um, uh, results. And consequences and this is a game that it, it while you're going through that deck and you know the deck is the thing that drives it you never feel like you're a slave of the deck you never feel like the deck you never feel like the game is playing you you are in charge you are playing the game but man it's tough you know you're the british and you, you you're trying to get troops out of the plains of abraham so you got to get ships up the uh saint lawrence so that you can do that um you have to have two ships there in order to transport units and you play a car that can transport a lot of units there and you want to do that you want to get wolf there so that he can mount that that offensive on on quebec but it is tough. It's tough to get there. Now, if you're the French, conversely, you're trying to keep the British out of there, and you do have these aggressive options to launch fire ships to try to take out their ships, but you've only got a couple of them, and it, it can be tough, so you've got to be really careful how you do that. Um, but either side you're playing, it's incredibly brutal, and it is a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of these states, uh, I was going to say states of siege games, but these siege games that, that, that um, Worthington has come out with. I will say, um, between between 1759 Siege of Quebec and 414 BC Siege of Syracuse, of the two of them, I probably like Quebec better. I don't know. I you know I'm a huge fan of the history of the Peloponnesian War, but I don't know. I just felt like this game just sucked me in a little bit more. I I, I don't know what it is, but it was just tremendously fun. So of course, no brainer. Really loved this game. Really excited to keep playing it and see where it takes me. This is 1759 Siege of Quebec from Worthington that I highly, highly recommend. Buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I've got one for you. Why did the War Gamer cross the road? He didn't. The chicken had opportunity fire and blew him away. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. The Discriminating Gamer. Proudly serving the board game community for 14 years, in dog years.